Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber, here with your next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that analyzes certain unique data that points to the Rapture Resurrection event. Daniel's 70th week and the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at His second coming. So, if information like this sounds good to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now because we have more reports coming out dealing with the new information in this chart. Now, family, in today's report, we're going to be talking about the newly updated chart that I have in front of you right here. I'm sure you noticed by now we have many new celestial signs that we have added to this chart because we have new data coming in. And it all points to Daniel's 70th week at our doorstep and the rapture resurrection event. And when I get done explaining this chart, you are going to be immensely excited. Now, before we get started, please just take a moment, hit that thumbs up button. It helps push this video throughout YouTube so more people can see this information. More believers can see it and get excited about the Lord's return. So if you hit that thumbs up button, we would so greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, without no more further ado, let's get into it. Now, what I'm going to do now is rebuild the entire chart right in front of you. So that way you can understand the whole thing. And I'm going to focus just on the main signs. I'm not going to get into all the solar eclipses and blood moons because there is so much information there. Rabbit trails all over the place. And even in the main signs, I'm going to show you, there are deep dives in every single one of them that we will have to save for another video. In this video, we are just going to cover the main message of what God has been trying to tell us here about this celestial parade that began in 2014 and will end in 2031. Sound good? So let's get into it. Now let's start with the center of the chart right here on the left side. As you can see, this is the Gregorian calendar with all the yellow numbers that runs from 2014 through 2031. Under that we have the Hebrew calendar, which is in the blue lettering and numbers. And then under that we have the Christian calendar in the white lettering and numbers. And then under the Christian year count, we have the actual year count. We believe this to be the actual Hebrew calendar. Now this is a 17 year total timeline. And this 17 year timeline is broken up into three sectors. Sector one, which is the first three years of this timeline. Sector 2, which makes up the next seven years after that. And Sector 3, which is the final seven years of this 17-year timeline. So this 17-year timeline is broken down into the numbers 3, 7, and 7. The number 3, which is a representation of divine completion, finished, lesser to 7. Then the number 7, of course, means finished, perfection, complete. It's also a representation of God's perfect judgment. The seven trumpets, for example. Seven bowls of wrath. So we have three years, seven years, and seven years, which is a total of 17 years. And according to the Bible, the number 17 represents overcoming the enemy, complete victory. And according to this chart, what do we see happening here at the end of the 17-year timeline? The second coming of Jesus Christ, where the Bible says he will destroy all of his enemies on the earth with the brightness of his coming. The Bible says that a sharp sword will proceed out of his mouth, and at that point he will have complete victory over all of his adversaries. At the end of the 17-year timeline in 2031, when Jesus returns to the earth to set up his millennial reign, thus bringing an end to the 17-year timeline. Now, to further confirm what I just showed you, we need to go back to the beginning of this timeline. And what I'm going to do is remove everything from this timeline and quickly rebuild it right in front of your own eyes so that way you can understand the breakdown of the first three years, the second seven years, and the final seven years of this timeline. And by doing this, we will be able to give you a solid educational guess of when the tribulation can begin and when the rapture resurrection can take place. Now, since we understand this whole timeline is broken up into three sectors, it's a total 17 year timeline. 
I want to relabel these time frames with something that's more suitable to help us understand what's going on here. So instead of calling it sector one, two, and three, I'm going to relabel them to a pre-warning time frame, a warning time frame, and Daniel's 70th week time frame. Now, if you follow me, you'll see why this is divided up into these three sectors. And what I'm going to do is remove all the signs on top and just rebuild this whole thing with the main signs. First, we have a three and a half year pre-warning time frame that started with the beginning of the Blood Moon Tetrad in April 2014, where we saw four Blood Moons fall on Passover and Tabernacles, Passover and Tabernacles in 2014-2015. Now, we have seen this happen before back in 1967-68 marking Israel's Yom Kippur War, and also back in 1949-1950, marking the rebirth of corporate Israel. So every time this Tetrad sequence shows up, it is a warning that God is about to do a major move with Israel. And as you can see in this chart right here, we can see this has taken place eight times now since Jesus walked the earth. And in 2014 and 15, that was the eighth occurrence. Eight is the number of new beginnings. So this was a sign from God. He is about to give Israel a new beginning here on the earth with the beginning of his millennial reign coming in 2031. And this is confirmed because none of these other blood moon tetrads were accompanied by other major celestial signs like this one was. For example, with the solar eclipse on the sun one marking a new beginning first day of the year you see a picture of new beginnings there and also the Bethlehem star which also marked the beginning of Jesus on the earth just like it did almost 2,000 years ago so this whole three and a half year pre-warning sequence from 2014 to 2017 was a warning of a new beginning that is coming at the end of this timeline in 2030-2031. And since it has a picture of beginnings in this sequence, it also marks the beginning of this timeline itself that goes for 17 years, from 2014 to 2031. Now after the pre-warning period for three and a half years, we enter the next sector of the 17-year timeline and that is the seven year warning time frame and we see a picture of a seven count of warning in the bible before god pours out his wrath we see that in the book of genesis where Noah and his family and the animals were in the ark for seven days before god poured out his wrath with the flood on the earth we also see this in the book of joshua where the israelites march around jericho seven times before blowing the trumpets and God pours out his wrath on Jericho where the walls of Jericho fell and the Israelites took the city. So imagine being in Jericho watching this countdown of seven times as they went around the city just as we are right now in the seven year warning watching this countdown of seven years come to an end where the tribulation will take place after this. This is the exact same seven year warning that we saw in the Bible with the story of Joseph. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. A seven year warning to prepare for the seven years of famine that was ahead. And the seven years of famine that we see ahead of us here right now is the seven year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. Now family, before we go any further, I know we want to get out of here, but we also need to be about our father's business. I mean, after all, we are going to be judged for it. And if that concerns you, you need to check out this next short clip, and I'll see you right after this quick break. Family, the fall feasts of 2024 are finally here. The rapture resurrection is at hand. So this leaves us a small window of time now to reach the lost before the trumpet sounds. Feed My Sheep Today has been supporting Christian missions now for well over a decade. And every year we see the same thing. There is a massive ramp up during the fall feast of new believers being added to the body of Christ. This happens every year during the fall feast. The massive acceleration at the end of the harvest is here. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, all these new family members that are entering our family, the body of Christ, need our help. They all need and all deserve their own personal Bible for free. 
and some of them need humanitarian relief aid like food, blankets, clothing, medical assistance, and much more. We also have many orphanages of Christian children who also need your help with everything I just mentioned and also mattresses, the ability to access clean water, shoes, socks, the upkeep of the orphanage building that they're in, and much, much more. As you can see, there is a massive scope of need of all these new believers and precious children that needs to be addressed. And unfortunately, the only way we could tackle it is with financial support. Financial support that will greatly reward you in heaven for the work that is completed here. So how big of an impact in all of this do you want to make? For example, if you donated $30 today, 10 new believers will receive their very first free Bible within the next three days. We have seen that Bibles cost on average about $3 a piece around the world. So if you want to make a greater impact than that, just look at the chart right here. For example, a one-time gift of $100 will provide over 30 new free Bibles to new believers. Did you know that the average church in America may see around six to seven salvations per year? Not here at Feeding My Sheep today. Right now we are seeing anywhere between 1,700 and 2,000 new salvations taking place every day through the work of Feed My Sheep today. So are you ready to make a major impact in God's kingdom? All you have to do is go to our official website is feedmysheeptoday.org. Link is in the description box below. There you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, and many other online options as well like Google Pay and more. And family, check this out. Now you can easily convert crypto and stocks into a donation as well. Any stock, any crypto, as easy as one, two, three, and you're done. Or if you don't wanna mess with any of this, all you have to do is just pick up your smartphone and text SHEEP to 801-801 and you can very easily give right there. Don't like giving online? No problem. Send your support by mail to Feed My Sheep Today, P.O. Box 568, Cherivelle, Indiana 46375. Want to make a big impact but don't have the money to do it right now? Just become an easy feed monthly sustainer. We greatly need monthly sustainers. This allows Feed My Sheep Today to plan for next month by making solid commitments to the leadership in these areas that we will be visiting because we know that the funds will be there at this point next month to take care of their needs. Plus, it's easier for you. Just set it and forget it. And this frees you up to do other things for the Lord while this is working on automatic on your behalf. And you can easily make changes at any time. And make sure to track your investment by following all of our other social media platforms. Links are in the description box below. Feed My Sheep today is ready to partner with you to make your impact in God's kingdom today. Thank you all so much for the many years of support. Let's finish strong together and may God bless you all. Now, let's break down this seven-year warning that's about to end here in a few weeks. This seven-year warning started on the Feast of Trumpets, September 23rd, 2017, and that day was marked with the Revelation 12 sign. Revelation chapter 12 says that there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And this is exactly what happened that year. A total of 12 stars between stars and planets combined to form a crown of 12 stars with the Leo constellation above her head. She was clothed in the sun and the moon was at her feet. And what really brings this whole sign home was the fact that Jupiter, which is known as the king planet, was in a retrograde motion within the womb of Virgo for nine months up until this day. And on the Feast of Trumpets, Jupiter exited the womb of this Virgo constellation right between her legs, symbolizing the birth of the man-child. So this was the only time this completed celestial sequence ever took place. There have been ones like it, but she never had a crown of 12 stars 
and a planet that was in a retrograde motion in the womb for nine months before or after this particular sign on this date. This here is a sign of the rapture. If you continue to read, it says, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads, and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up heart podso raptured unto god and to his throne that will be us the church the body of christ so here we have a massive rapture sign that represents the body of Christ getting taken out of here at the rapture resurrection right before the tribulation begins and it was the very first sign to kick off this seven year warning sequence that we are currently in right now so this is how God labels the seven year warning it's a seven year warning that the rapture resurrection is about to take place the tribulation is about to begin and he marks it by kicking it off with the Revelation 12 sign right at the beginning of the seven year warning. Right on day one, he is saying, hey, seven years from today, the rapture resurrection is going to take place and the tribulation is going to begin. Or let me explain it like this. If you give somebody a 10 day warning, do you come back to them in the middle of the 10 day warning on day five? To inform them what this 10 day warning was all about no you would declare it from day one at the beginning of the warning so you understand what the entire warning time is warning you of and in the Revelation 12 sign it encompasses everything essentially it's a celestial snapshot of what happens at the end of the age of grace with the rapture resurrection event and the entirety of Daniel's 70th week this one sign tells the whole story. This is why God placed this sign on day one. It identifies the entirety of this seven year warning that we are in the midst of right now. Now, I have something to show you in the Bible that confirms everything that I'm telling you right here. We just saw a celestial sequence that depicted the birth of the man child at the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017. Even though nobody was actually born, it was just a typology showing the coming birth of the man child. But what I'm about to show you is this sign actually followed a biblical protocol that deals with a woman when she gives birth to a man child. And that's in Leviticus 12, one through three. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child then she shall be unclean seven days so what happened here with the revelation 12 sign a woman gave birth to a man child on september 23rd 2017 the bible says then she shall be unclean seven days and in this case seven years a biblical week seven years are you making the connections and then it goes on to say according to the days of the separation for her infirmity she shall be unclean and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised and we being the corporate man child how does this apply to us how are we circumcised? How are we physically manipulated? Well, the Bible says our flesh is changed from mortal to immortality through a circumcision made without hands, just like our spirits received a circumcision made without hands. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we had a spiritual rebirth. Philippians 3.3, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Colossians 2.11 says, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sins 
of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. This is a spiritual circumcision that circumcised our spirit and brought it back to life, sealed it until the day of redemption. So if our spirit had to be circumcised by the Holy Spirit, wouldn't it make sense that our flesh would also have to be circumcised by the Holy Spirit? Of course. And that circumcision takes place at the rapture resurrection, giving us a new glorified body to match the glorified spirit that we were given previously before the rapture. So this seven year warning that we are in the midst of right now that got kicked off by the Revelation 12 sign on day one is also the seven days of uncleanliness for the woman. And then on the eighth day, the man child is circumcised. The physical application of this is the removal of the foreskin from the male child. But the spiritual corporate application of this is the rapture resurrection for the corporate man child, the church, the body of Christ. Now, the next thing we see in this timeline is right in the middle of this seven year warning in 2020. And we all know what happened in 2020. There was a blood moon tetrad of P number of blood moons that took place in the confines of the year 2020. And this has never happened before and it will never happen again. And on top of that, there was also another Bethlehem star that took place that same year on December 21st, the winter solstice, further signifying the significance of the middle of this seven year warning. Now, what can this mean? Well, at the beginning of the seven year warning, we saw a picture of the rapture resurrection take place, warning us what's going to happen at the beginning of the tribulation. But what does this Bethlehem star in the middle of the seven year warning warning us of? I believe it's warning us of the resurrection of the two witnesses that happens at the midpoint of the seven year tribulation that takes place in the next and final seven year sector of the 17 year timeline. You see how these events are aligning on this chart. First you have the warning of the event in the first seven years, then the execution of the event in the next seven years. Now family, this is the end of part one of the study of this chart. I know, just was about to get really good, but this video is available right now for you to watch on our backup channel. Link is in the description box below or just click the card above. And when you get there, please right away hit the subscribe button. Look folks, we're doing it this way so that way we could drive traffic to our backup channel because things are getting hairy out there. And if this channel gets taken down, we can stay connected with you through our backup channel. Okay, so we're trying to drive traffic over there. So when you get over there, do us both a favor and hit that subscribe button right away and enjoy the best part of this video still to come.